Hey YouTube world, I'm gonna play another game here. I just uh <laughs> I just lost an absolutely horrible game where I was two pieces up and then just absolutely blew it. So uh we're gonna try to do uh try to do a little bit better this game. Knight F three. I have not really faced that before. I'm uh still still pretty new to the Scandinavian. I get all kinds of weird stuff. I guess it's an indication that uh people don't really study haven't really studied the Scandinavian. And so they play perhaps some weird moves. So he's going to get the C4 and then E5, or C4 and then D4 probably soon. Let's play out here to make D4 a touch, a touch more difficult. But he'll just put the knight on C3 and he can get it in on the next move. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> so I think that this is going to be sort of like a tempo down Caro con now. I think, I think, except for he's not going to have the knight over here, he's going to have the knight here instead. Um, maybe this is okay. But uh, it's supposed to be difficult for white to get the c4, d4, and, uh, and uh, I've just allowed it. So we're going to have to check this out and see how to, how to avoid it next time. I'm just going to try to get castled. Okay. Hmm. Normally I like to put the bishop there, and that's a nice place for him to, to go to prevent that. So I guess we'll go to e7. Perhaps that's another advantage of the way he's got into this Karo can, is uh, that he got to put the bishop on f4. Normally there's a, a nice queen maneuver in the Karo con that prevents that. So, But I think we're solid enough. Um, I say that, and then immediately we find uh, a square I have a problem with. Should I just castle? Some castles. Queen takes. Rook b1. He takes here. And then we play rook c1. And the queen is not trapped because he still has a4. So that just loses a couple of pawns. Is there something better, some better way of doing that? I could play queen b6. I could play queen b4. Um, let's play. Let's play queen b4. If he takes, obviously he'll take back. Bishop. I guess I could have played bishop d4 also. Didn't like that as much. He may have been able to play a3. a3, clearly impossible here. Um, okay. So we're just going to castle now. If he plays c5, I have to trade queens. He just continues to, to develop. Preparing probably d5 is his main idea, which I should try to counter at some point. Let's do it. Maybe. I think I'm playing c5 right now, but then he trades queens and I have to take on b4, and uh, that leaves me without any way. Leaves these guys just completely out there. So I think if I want to play c5, I need to trade queens first. So we'll trade queens and then play c5. If takes, I'm happy. But if d5 instead, then what? If d5, then um, takes, 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 takes. Um, I think that I'll be able to play bishop f6 at the end, and uh, these double pawns I think will make it slightly tricky for him to to protect that. This is our this is our big idea. So he does he does push. I'll probably take with a pawn now though, won't he? Won't he? Mm, maybe not. I'm going to play knight e4 next, I think. 
so I can try to put it on F6. And I free up F6 for the for the bishop, like I mentioned. I guess this knight on D2 is going to be my uh, going to be my big uh, blockader. I guess I don't really want to take on uh, on C3. It's going to straighten out his pawns. So he's probably coming to the same conclusion. Let's see. I guess he thinks he's going to defend the pawn. Well, let's... Let's kick him. Because he can't go to D6 right now. And if he goes to C7, then I will just... put a rook on C8. Yes, that is what we're going to do. I'm going to put a rook on c8. Probably going to want a rook there at some point anyway. Okay, so he comes back. And let's go ahead and put a rook on c8 now. Square and defend the c5 pawn, pretty important pawn. Okay, so he goes ahead and does that. I was planning to go here anyway. So, we're okay with this. Maybe I'll play knight into d5 now, though. And I can't do it immediately. It drops a pawn. Okay, he does it anyway. Um, well, I think I'm just going to take the pawn. And... Perhaps we'll put the bishop on c3 if he plays b8. I want to find something that discovers that rook if he goes to b1. I don't see anything immediately. We don't see it immediately. <clears throat> well, we can always do that. We can always drop an exchange. No, a whole damn piece. He drops a whole piece. Annoying. Undefended piece, Jonathan. Undefended piece. Alright, so we're in a situation now where we've gotten two pieces. Or he's gotten two pieces for a rook, right? Right. I've got a pawn. I've got a pawn for it. And I have this three to one down here. So. Let's try to make something of that. Let's try to make something of that. Okay. He kicks our knight. Let's put it back. Maybe we'll go into d5. It worked out so well for him. Maybe we'll try it. Right? <laughs> <clears throat> we are hoping that our pawns will do something. This is what we are hoping. Of course, he maybe is going to play... Okay, so he comes in here to harass that. So, we're obviously not going to drop... We don't want to drop another exchange, clearly. So let's play it over to here. Knight is still guarding this guy. Do we have anything undefended at this point? The only he has two undefended pieces right now. Three if you count this pawn. I don't see any way to take advantage of that. You keep hearing me talk about undefended pieces because uh, <clears throat> um, my coach did a video on YouTube recently about uh, checking for undefended pieces and how many. Oh my goodness gracious. Speaking of undefended, wow. <laughs> and he didn't do it. That's amazing. <laughs> he didn't take my knight. What a nice guy. What an incredibly nice guy. All right, so we'll go here and attack the bishop. Such a nice fellow. 
<laughs> and some and they said chess players were not generous. Okay. All right. So what should we do? What should we do here? Well, let's go defend. Let's go defend the rook or the knight. So I'll defend the knight, and then we're gonna try to kick that bishop because uh, I don't like it. I do not like it even. Oh, and eh, potentially some problems though. He'll take takes here, and then he's gonna take here, or he'll just win another exchange, or he'll just win another exchange. Yikes! Yikes! Another horrible game here. This is. I got nothing. I got no time. I got resigns. Even though technically we're <laughs> even material for the moment. Horrible, horrible game. All right, let's back it up and take a look at this one. So, yeah, we <clears throat> we played knight f3 here against this. Um, okay, that's fine. Maybe we should play. Maybe bishop g4, and then if he plays c4, we can take on f3. He would. If he takes on d4, then we take his queen, he's king, uh, and then we take his queen, and he can't castle, and he's got double isolated pawns, so that seems like that would be good for us. So I think bishop g4 prevents him from playing uh, c4. <clears throat> um, what else? But if bishop g4, then he has bishop e2, and then we play... What do we do then? Um, we play C. We play just C five. No, I don't like that because there's checks and whatnot. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look this up or check with the check the databases to see what happens here. But instead, we got this position, which. I think I got an okay position. Maybe it wasn't amazing, but it was okay. And, yeah, but he ended up, maybe the c5 move was a bad move. Because after he pushed, it seemed like that that isolated pawn was some real problems here. He's got some, some nasty, some nasty threats. And we didn't want to take. Maybe we should have gone knight d6 here. And then if bishop takes, bishop takes, and the, the bishop, while not an amazing blockader, is doing okay. Yeah, I mean, his pawn structure stinks, so if we can, like, trade everything off, um, maybe this pawn could become weak or something, but there's a lot of pieces on the board, even though queens have been traded. Instead, we, um, we, we won a pawn and gave up the exchange. Uh, or actually, no, we gave up two two miners for for a rook, which is uh, not good. Although we got a pawn, so it was roughly equivalent, but uh, I think the miners are clearly better here. As we see, I get shoved around and end up uh, <laughs> and this is just a funny move. So, instead of playing c5 here, is c5 the best move? Probably not. Maybe we should just put the rooks in the middle of the board. Yeah, I think that instead of I think c5 is pretty premature because he is clearly better developed, which means open the center when the opponent is better developed should spell a disaster. So I should probably just play rook d1 or rook or rook d8 or rook c8, one of the two, and uh, and hang on for for a bit. That's probably what probably what should happen. Um, because when he plays d5, eventually, and we get we take a couple captures. Um, these guys could be weak later later on. So I think I definitely should just put the rooks in the middle of the board. Uh, in the middle of the board here, and I probably probably would turn out a lot better than this. I sometimes I know that my thematic break is c5, so I usually just try to play it like uh, perhaps too frequently. But uh, like in this game. Uh, opening it up just gave uh, my opponent way too much jack activity. So uh, hopefully we learn from that, and uh, we won't do that again.
So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.